In this short video, I'm going to show you uh, a number of tricks on making publication ready figures and not fussing around uh, with developing figures. Now, there are essentially two aspects to making figures. One is uh, the layout and the annotation. So the, the layout is how you arrange what I would call your data. And then your annotation are these various components which explain what's happening in your figure. Now, the way that you want to lay out, so I use PowerPoint uh, because I find it convenient for sharing, um, uh, sharing paper figures with code writers. Uh, I think it's widely used. Maybe you have some other way of doing it. So you might start with this wide slide. But I've found that a really nice way of approaching making your figures is to work within the confines of what you actually have to work with. So, so a 9 by 6.5 inch, sure, maximize. Make it blank. So a 9 by 6.5 inch slide size is exactly what you'll have based off common one inch margins on a text document like in Word. Now I've already made a figure that so I've already made a figure and I'm gonna go through the various components of it. Now because I've used the size of my document all of the text that I put in now has the right size relative to the image, meaning that everything I do uh, is relevant to how it will actually look in my Word document. For instance, if I were just to copy these items, open up Word, and paste them in, you'll see that they are no different than if they were in the document, in this uh, PowerPoint document. Okay, so let me go over a few things. One, whenever possible, you want to use the actual object. So it's common for people to be like, oh, I made this object. I'm, I'm just going to simplify it by pasting a figure of it. That's a bad idea because it really degrades the quality of this object. Next, when you do have font like this um, micron bar here, which is embedded intrinsically in a program, you want to be exporting at like 600 DPI or higher. It really depends on all the feature sizes and everything in your image, but definitely better to err on the size of a higher resolution um, because essentially what we're going to be doing is uh, resampling and repackaging these image into a particular resolution uh, where all the fonts still look nice and everything. And if you start with bad looking fonts, you're going to end with bad looking fonts no matter how you uh, subsample or sample your images. The same thing goes for this. These are embedded fonts that are part of an image that I've cleaned up and and put in. Okay, so at this point we want to export this slide essentially as a figure. So I'm gonna just uh, save and let this more save options. Let's uh, browse and just stick this on the desktop. So you got we have this presentation too. So at this point we want to export. Now if we if you just export normally, you're gonna be disappointed. Um, by default, I think maybe 80 like 120-ish DPI or something like that. So you can go to reg editor. 
current user software, Microsoft Office, whatever the version of your office is, options, and then you'll add by hitting new VWord 32 bit value, this export bitmap resolution, and uh, and you set your DPI for the export of the slide. So I use a thousand. Now, uh, I found that a thousand uh, was sufficient for all my needs, meaning that when I use this setup where I have a, a, a 9 by 6.5 slide, uh, and given how most of my figures end up looking as far as text go and fine details and whatnot, I never need more than a thousand DPI to describe the information uh, here. Your case might be different. You might have very, very small, fine features due to starting you know, with a larger image and then shrinking it down or something. And you might want to be able to capture that detail, in which case you might need to bump up even over a thousand DPI in your export to really make sure that everything is sharp and looks the way you want it to. So having set uh, the export DPI, we're just going to go ahead and save this slide. You can try saving as a PDF, but I found that it really degrades uh, some components of the image. So my go-to is just to save all of the PowerPoint slides uh, in the take format. So we can get all slides. It creates a little folder with the slides inside. Okay, and you can see that we have really nice crisp fonts. Everything looks exactly the way that we want it to. Uh, one thing I wanted to add is if you are using something like MATLAB or I don't know, maybe a Python plotting program or something like that, it's really helpful to use paper position. Now, what paper position does is say, basically it says, how, what shape do I want to save the image in? Uh, and it's actually slightly decoupled from, in MATLAB anyways, from what you see on your screen. Uh, in this case, I'm saying I want a 3.5, a 3.25 inch wide image and five inches tall. So when you put your image in your PowerPoint, what you're going to find is that as long as you use consistent page size, nothing changes in your document. So for instance, switch to a different map. So even though we changed the map uh, and we have all these different layers and everything going on in PowerPoint, we can quickly switch out and switch in uh, figures as long as the size is appropriate. So it, I think this would be an example of switching in an image of a different size. So from a file, you know, let's say we try putting that in this. Okay, so you change the size of the image, you had some original image, and then you try to change it out. Now you've got to resize it back to whatever's going on. Okay, so this is this is the effect that I'm trying to say we can completely avoid that as long as we use plotting commands that specify the paper position. There's a wonderful program called GIMP, which is free and allows you to edit and do all sorts of wonderful things to images. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're using GIMP or Photoshop or some other program that you really like, but you should invest a little bit in program that is fully featured in terms of photo editing. So in this case, we have our exported slide presentation too. We're going to just dump the image into GIMP. And uh, we can look at the image scale inches. So we exported a 9 by 6.5 inch slide at 1,000 pixels per inch. If you click up here, we get an editing box. I'm not going to spend a lot of time taking this in, but you can zoom and get exactly whatever you want. You enter, that's your cropped image. Now you can export slide cropped as is. 
and use the compression. Now, if we want to change, right now, like I said, it's at, currently at a, a thousand DPI. So we switch this to inches. We want 600 DPI for our publication. We want to keep that size, that paper size. We hit scale. We export. Ready for 600 DPI. Now we have two images. So on the left, we have the 600 DPI. And on the right, we have just the prop. So let's go ahead and inspect. Do we see any real differences? Yeah, you can definitely see that there's a pixel change. If you're looking at these pixels along the two, uh, they're slightly more refined in this uh, 1000 DPI and a little bit less refined here in the 600 DPI. Now, does it look bad? So this is at 200% magnification compared to what it would be in the, in the document. And this is at 100% magnification. I think this looks pretty acceptable for what we're trying to do. Does one look significantly better than the other? I think uh, you can be the judge of that.